Tony, you've taken last year's under 17s up to under 19s this year, and with some new additions, they're fairly much a new group. How much of a challenge has that been for you? Yeah, well, at least you know the players that are stepping up. So I think for me, the most important thing was is to get the right balance between um, obviously, there's a few players training with the first team. So from every week, you don't know how many players are going to drop down. So it's to get the balance of having enough players uh, to train during the week as well. So we needed to bring in a few additions uh, into the squad to make sure that we had that balance right um, so that it didn't disrupt our training during the week as well. Um, so I've been pleased that, that we've done that. So that's all working out well. Uh, having worked with most of the squad for the last two years, you have a good knowledge of the ability and capabilities of the individual players. Uh, how are they coping as individuals at under-19 level? Yeah, it's no problem. I think the talent that we have at the club, um, particularly at the younger age group, I think it's important that we push the players to play at the highest level that they can play. I think players that play you know, within themselves at an age group that they're, they're better than the age group. I don't think it does them any good long term. I think if, if we push them up into a higher level, it, it, it makes more demands of them and they become better players for it. So I think we are aware in the academy that of the players that need at times to play at a higher level. And, you know, the players that are in the 19s now, the under 17s, you know, they're, they're quite comfortable. Um, playing at that level and we've got Ike playing as well who's you know 15 and he, he's uh, coming along and there's things in his own game that we're trying to improve and but uh, he's responding as well and he's, he's well able to play at that level. Now the team have suffered just one defeat since the beginning of the season with all straight wins since then at, since that opening day. Are you satisfied with how it's going so far? Yeah, I've been pleased. Even opening day, the defeat we had, we probably didn't deserve to be beaten. Um, we played well on the day and um, conceded a late, late goal, last kick of the game. But um, I think every game you're trying to learn from and you're trying to improve the players all the time. You're trying to improve the way we play and uh, you're making demands of the players as well. I think, you know, I always say, like, Everybody at this football club is here for a reason and it's because they're talented and they're well able to, to, they're comfortable on the ball but there's other attributes in the game that you need and um, it's work rate and desire and it's how, it's how much you're prepared to put into your training and, and the games is that defines you as a player as well and that makes you a better all round player. Now you yourself have built up a wealth of experience in the game having served at several clubs at the highest level as well as at youth level. In addition to passing on your experience to the young players, do you feel your own experiences at a young age relate in any way to what your players are doing now? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I think for, for players in general and particularly, as you said, young players, you go through different stages of your career, you'll have your ups and downs. I think football is kind of like a roller coaster. Uh, you go up and you go down and you know probably then when I went into management it's very much the same and I think what you're really looking for is a, a levelness there and in between don't get too high with your ups and don't get too low uh, when you have your lows and I think if you can try keep yourself level headed I think that is the best way to, to keep yourself on the, on the straight and narrow but I think most importantly Young players need the right people around them, they need the right advice around them, they need the right support from their family, their, you know, their parents. Um, and I think that, that, the things I've spoken about, comes from parents as well, that they, they keep the player, you know, his feet on the ground and, and they support him in the right way. And I think that's, that's important as well. So looking back now at things, uh, would you have done it in different yourself throughout your career? I think, you know, you can't, I think when you look back in life, you know, it's great, we'd be all perfect if we live, led our life in hindsight. Um, you know, I've, when you look back, I've been very lucky. 
I've had a uh, you know great experiences throughout my life. Uh, the teams I played for, uh, the teams I've managed, and uh, so I look at myself as being lucky as well. You know, people would say, "Oh, you had a lot of injuries when you're in England and all," but I was very lucky to get there. Like those players as good as me, never got the opportunity. So I never look and say, "Well, oh." Uh, this should have happened or that should have happened. Everything happens for a reason in life and the most important thing is that you keep looking forward. You never look back and uh, if you look back you feel sorry for yourself. If you look forward you're always waiting on the next challenge. What would you say has been the standout moment for you throughout your career? Um, I suppose there's been, there's been a good few, you know. Um, like... Uh, like, you know, I suppose I started with Dundalk, you know, you're playing a couple of cup finals as a very young man. I played in the first league cup final when I was only 18. When I look at some of the players that I have in the under 19s, and you think that, Jesus, I was playing, I played in the league cup final when I was their age. And, uh, and it was an experience in itself for me because I didn't play well. I got taken off. I got kicked over the line by Kevin Brady a couple of times and but it's through those experiences as a young player that you kind of you battle back and you learn from it and I think that's the important thing and so so the likes of experiences like that and then um, we played obviously I got a move to Liverpool fantastic experience over there and you know, things never leave you. It's in your mind, the training that we did over there and, and things that you pick up and you learn from. And then obviously coming home and, you know, had great times here as a player, you know. I think no matter what, when you pull on the jersey, you're, you're playing in somebody else's footsteps. And I think for any player, you know, you just give your best, give your all, you know. People say, oh, they're the fans are demanding. I always felt that if you gave a hundred percent, the supporters were right behind you, and I think that's that's what they asked for, and that's the demands that are here. And uh, I try to give that to my players. That that's a given. That they they give everything they have. No, you played for Rovers yourself from nineteen ninety six to two thousand and two, so you fully understand what everything means to the fans and what it means to play for the club. How do you relate that to the lads that you're managing at the academy? Well, you, you relate in relation to how special it is, you know, to, to pull on the first team short and, you know, how hard you have to work to get there. And when you get there, that's when you've got to work harder. And, you know, particularly as a young player, um, sometimes you know, you're working hard to achieve it and you get into the first team. But that's the first start, that's the start. You're on the first step of the ladder. It's really then, can you establish yourself as a first team player and build yourself a career at that level? And I think that's the most important thing that the player himself doesn't feel that he's, he's standing still. He needs to make sure that he's pushing himself on, he's improving, and he's improving in his training, and he's improving in the games and you know, he's getting better and he's moving forward and you know, he's establishing himself as, as a first team player and uh, not standing still and I think that's the most important thing. And who's with you now this year in coaching the under-19s? Uh, Chris McDonald came up with me from the 17s and Josh Hockton is in as well as a coach so have great support there so um, the two lads are fantastic and Chris has been with me now three years and we have a brilliant relationship together and uh, he's a fantastic uh, young coach so I'm um, very lucky to have, have him. Have you set any targets for your under 19 group this year? Most important we, we get out of the first phase so that's that's the that's the one thing and then we want to play in the leaf phase. So we're on our way to achieving that at the moment. 
so and you want to play against the best teams and the second phase is it, the, the 10 teams that qualify play against each other twice which is you know for me it's, it's 18 really tough games and that's when you see your players that's when you, you you see the players at their best really you know what I mean against the best so it's you see the better players at their best so and I think it's so important for us as a club that our, our teams are playing at the highest level at the elite level but in general really is to see players develop and over the course of the season you know are the results the be all and end all no not really um, if we get a couple of players into the first team by the end of the season that haven't played in the first team I think that's really what I'm looking for you know I'd be hoping for and with the talent that we have in the squad I think there's there's a couple of players there that you know that that can force their way in and I know the manager I know Brad's are really um, like likes them so uh, you know they're taking a keen interest in, in it in, in the under 19 and that's team. what the players should be aiming for 100% if you're here you're aiming to play in our first team that's that to be in an all end I understand and I say to the players all the time not every player is going to get that opportunity and from me as a coach and Chris as a coach we're trying to develop players that they can make a career in the game and that's maybe they're not all going to make it to Shamrock Rovers but at the end of the day they're at one of the biggest academies in the country if they're playing well here there's a lot of other teams will come and watch them um, and we're hoping to get them to a standard that if they walk away that they've, they, they've got another club and they're making a career in whether it's the first division or the premier division with another club at least so I think that's you're looking at the looking at developing for our own club but you're also looking for the development of the player himself and there will be players that will leave here they'll go away and maybe in six years time they come back signed again because uh, they've just developed into a better player at an older age your dad was a big influence on you Tony do you ever think if he was here now what advice would he give yeah, um, he's 12 years dead today, so uh, yeah, um, I just think he'd be just delighted that I'm still involved, that I'm up at Rovers, and I think that's that's the one thing he always, he gave me the love of football, he always wanted me to be involved in football, so I think he'd be delighted that I'm still involved and up at the academy and you know you're you're dealing with players at the highest level young level and you're trying to get them ready for for the first team and you know it's something that i love love doing and love being involved here so i think he'd be he'd be proud of that 